Land Rover versus Jeep. Few brands are as well known for their off-road prowess as Jeep and Land Rover. For decades, these two automakers have produced rugged SUVs that are equally at home on a country road as they are in front of a posh hotel. The Jeep Grand Cherokee and Land Rover Discovery both represent a sweet spot in their respective family lineups. Large enough to transport five adults and their belongings, but not so large as to be bulky. So, for today's video, we're going to pit these two titans against one another to figure out which high rider is the one to have. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Let's start by talking about the interior and cargo space. The rich two-tone interior layout of the Jeep immediately impresses. Quilted Tupelo leather, open pore wood, and subtle amounts of brushed chrome elevate the space to truly premium status. The combination not only looks great, but it also feels great. Jeep also kept the top of the dashboard matte black to reduce distracting reflections. The soft glow of the ambient lighting shines through the undersides of the dashboard at night. We like the elegantly thin headrests for purely aesthetic reasons. What is the most serious criticism, you may ask? The overuse of piano black trim on the center console makes it impossible to avoid smudging it. Both rows have plenty of room for adults. If the 39.4 inches of headroom is insufficient for tall people, the rear seats recline slightly. Jeep has also slightly reduced rear legroom, though at 38.2 inches, it's hardly lacking. The door opening is also larger and squarer than its British counterpart. When you open the powered tailgate, you'll find a very usable 37.7 cubic feet of space. Though the wheel arches eat into the available space, the load floor is flat and relatively low. When the 60-40 split rear seats are folded, the figure expands to 70.8 cubes. When properly equipped, this V8 powered GC has a towing capacity of 7,200 pounds. On the other hand, although it bears the nickname Disco, this mid-sized Land Rover isn't nearly as flashy as its American counterpart. Some of that can be attributed to the plain black interior, which the contrast piping alone cannot improve. The dashboard is also much simpler, with a simple design that can be either clean or boring depending on your point of view. JLR's use of neoprene is a wise choice, lending the Discovery an air of adventure. It does, however, leave the center console, a primary touchpoint, feeling a little cheap. Not so with the aluminium stanchions that frame the central controls. The ascent into the Discovery's front seats is much more noticeable. Once there, the driver has a commanding view of the road ahead, and the low window line allows for good visibility at the sides as well. For the short-legged driver, the seating position, an upright close to the wheel affair that feels more like a bar stool, was impossible to fully integrate. The light bolstering of the leather front seats doesn't help, but they give up little in comfort on longer drives. A massage function is available in the options menu, but it is not available here. Access to the second row is hit or miss. Although the opening is small and angled, the cushion and backs are more supportive than the flat Jeep items. The headliner gap between the two sunroofs makes second row headroom barely half an inch tighter than inside the Grand Cherokee. Legroom is 37.4 inches, which is two inches less than the Jeep. This is due to Land Rover cramming a pair of third row seats in here. Because of the low cushion to the ground, they're best used as occasional perches, but adults can fit in if necessary. Do you want that in your Jeep? Then you'll have to upgrade to the big Grand Cherokee L. The trunk space is a laughably small 9.1 cubes with the way back up. Fold them down and you have a much more manageable 45 cubes to work with, 74.3 cubes when running in two-seater mode. However, the powered load tray lip makes it more difficult to reach runaway groceries. When properly equipped, the Discovery's inline six engine can tow up to 8,200 pounds. Moving on to the tech and features, the show is run by Jeep's excellent Uconnect 5 system. The central screen is 10.1 inches in size, but there is also a unit in front of the passenger seat. The smartphone-like interface is simple to use, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto allows you to use an actual smartphone if you prefer. 
Saving multiple user profiles is also important in such a family-oriented machine. We like how Jeep hasn't abandoned all physical controls, with important buttons and dials located just below the screen. Temperature controls, thankfully, remain visible at all times. Without a doubt, the Jeep has the best audio system in this class. The 19-speaker Macintosh system is incredible, with a rich sound that had me waiting for the song to end on multiple occasions. That's not the only trick the Jeep has up its sleeve. This tester's optional night vision is extremely useful in the wilderness. When activated, the digital instrument cluster switches to a crisp grayscale view of the road ahead, picking up traces of light that would otherwise be imperceptible. Another set of eyes can be invaluable on dark back roads. For good measure, there's also a head-up display. Standard safety features include automated emergency braking, rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot assist, and adaptive cruise control. A 360-degree camera and parking sensors are useful, but I should point out that the Jeep is already the easier vehicle to see out of. As for the Discovery, the previous JLR models were rightfully chastised for using an outdated infotainment system. However, with PIVI Pro, the Discovery's multimedia setup is once again fully competitive. The 11.4-inch screen works in the same way as the smaller one in the Jeep, though its response times are generally slower. It too supports wireless phone mirroring, which works flawlessly and takes up the majority of the screen. It's also simple to switch between those and the native setup. A digital instrument panel is equally attractive, though it does not allow for as much customization as the Jeep's. Both vehicles have an impressively detailed off-road menu, relaying information such as incline angle and power distribution via the main screen. The four-zone climate control system is excellent, with heated and ventilated second-row seats like the Jeep. There is the option for third-row heated seats, which were not present on this tester. How uncommon is that? JLR's ingenious physical climate controls continue to captivate me. Rotate the dials for temperature, push them in for heat seating and cooling, and pull for fan speed. And lastly, let's discuss the powertrain, driving feel, and fuel economy. The Pentastar V6 engine that powers millions of Mopars is standard on the Jeep. Its 293 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque can shift the midsize with ease, aided by an 8-speed automatic transmission. In the United States, rear-wheel drive is standard, with one of three 4x4 systems available depending on trim. This Summit Reserve Tester has the optional 5.7-litre Hemi engine, which befits its position at the top of the food chain. This increases output to 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet while still using an 8-speed ZF-sourced automatic transmission. There's also a significant increase in fuel economy. The V8 gets the same 22 miles per gallon on the highway as the V6 combined. The city rating is a dismal 14 miles per gallon, resulting in a combined rating of only 17 miles per gallon for the V8. In Canada, the figures are 16.7 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, 10.9 litres per 100 kilometres on the highway, and 14.1 litres per 100 kilometres combined. As for the Discovery, the standard powertrain is the P300 2.0-litre Turbo 4, which comes with a standard 44 setup on either side of the border. It produces 296 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque via an 8-speed automatic transmission. The upgraded Ingenium 3.0-litre inline-6 engine powers this Canadian spec tester. This mild hybrid setup processes 355 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, thanks to a turbocharger and an electric motor. On paper, the Discovery trails the Jeep, but in practice, it is the clear winner. Torque is instant access quick, so despite being the larger machine, the Discovery rarely feels it. The brake pedal has a longer travel distance, which requires some getting used to, but allows for more precise application. If only the steering was more direct, the final verdict. Jeep's upmarket parade continues unabated. Lower trims of the Grand Cherokee retain the classless everyman feel that has made it so popular, but the Summit Reserve is certainly fancy enough to compete with the Land Rover, let alone the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE. 
The Land Rover is not without its charms. Its luxury is more understated, making it a more discreet alternative to the blinged out Jeep. At least, as low key as something that resembles a fridge from behind can be. It also has a smoother, more modern powertrain, as well as a better fuel economy. While this tester performed flawlessly during its seven day stay with us, it's impossible to ignore JLR's ongoing reliability issues. We were more impressed with the Grand Cherokee's overall package. The pampering and pretty interior, which is positively overflowing with tech, set the bar. That said, this is it for today's video. Thanks for watching.